So my friend Benjamin on Facebook wants me to talk about uh, full stack development options. And this is a pretty large topic, but I'm going to try to cover all your options briefly here. Uh, when we talk about full stack, we're usually talking about web development. And what makes a full stack developer different is that they can do both the front end and the back end uh, portions of the development. If you're new to web development, you might be trying to decide what language or technology to use. And there are a lot of options out there. so. Hopefully this video can help you uh, decide what you want to do. Before I start talking about all the options, I want to talk real quick about how exactly web development works. So when you open up a browser and you go to a web page, uh, how exactly does all that happen? Uh, so your web browser is going to create a request, and that request is going to get sent through the internet to a web server, and that web server is going to respond with the uh, data for the web page. And then when it gets back to your browser, your browser is going to render that data. Here's an example of a web request, and then the raw response headers, and then the HTML in the response body. So with a simple web server setup, it will just be serving static HTML files. So your web server will be in charge of creating the response headers, and then the body of the response that gets rendered in the browser screen will just be HTML that you have saved in a, a static HTML file on the web server. And you can imagine if you're creating these HTML files manually, then once you get to about five or six of them, it's going to be real tedious uh, to maintain them all and make changes that might apply to all your HTML files. Uh, so pretty early on in the history of the internet, people started looking for ways to automate the process of generating these HTML files so if you're wondering why there are so many options when it comes to full stack web development, it's because any programming language that can produce HTML is potentially suitable to work as a backend uh, web development language or framework or system, um, which is pretty much any language because HTML in the end is just a formatted string and most any programming language can handle strings pretty well. So I'm going to talk about the various options for web development. I'll start with the uh, backend technologies. And then I'll talk about the front end options that you have. And for each one of these, I'll go through why people use this option, uh, maybe some of the downsides for that option, and what it's best at doing today. So, in the back end, one of the first technologies that became popular was a language called PHP. And this was popular because you could write PHP code directly in your HTML files. Also, back in the day, uh, shared web hosting was really popular. And most of the shared web hosting services, uh, PHP was installed on the server for you, and most other languages weren't, so it was just a really accessible option uh, and easy to learn for people who were previously familiar with pure HTML development. So some of the downsides of PHP. Uh, PHP isn't the most consistent language. Uh, sometimes, you know, the order of uh, parameters, arguments, in functions uh, can be really similar between two different functions, but the order of them is switched. Also, because it's so easy to just insert PHP into HTML files, it ended up generating a lot of projects um, that weren't very well organized and were very difficult to maintain. And if you had a PHP job um, at one company, they probably came up with their own system and framework for dealing with their project. And then when you went to another company who is also a PHP company, you know, the style of code that they were using could look completely different and it could take you weeks to uh, get caught up with the way that they do things. Uh, but that's improved in recent years with the development of some popular PHP frameworks. I know Laravel is a popular one. Uh, one I've used in the past is called CodeIgniter. Uh, so if you are learning PHP, I would learn one of those frameworks along with it. So why would you learn PHP today? Uh, well, it's got a low barrier of entry. It's pretty easy to get into con compared to some of the other languages. Uh, it's also used by WordPress, and there's a lot of WordPress jobs out there. Uh, so if you're customizing WordPress sites, PHP is the language you need to know. There's also a lot of other CMSs that are written in PHP, uh, Drupal being one of them. Um, but that's the sort of work that's most popular nowadays for PHP programmers. Another popular system for back-end web development is Ruby on Rails. Ruby on Rails was really popular when it first hit the scene because it allows companies to build uh, websites and web applications very quickly um, in a way that's organized and scalable and maintainable and it's just really enjoyable to work with. Uh, it introduced concepts like migrations and the MVC framework for dealing with templates to render HTML. 
It was really popular with the startup culture, and I still see it quite a bit with startup type companies. As for downsides, Ruby on Rails is a little bit more difficult to get started with uh, if you're brand new to programming. It's also not the hottest technology anymore, so it might be a little difficult to find open positions uh, for Ruby developers. But I still think that Ruby on Rails is great. I think uh, a lot of Ruby on Rails developers are really uh, skilled, solid engineers. Uh, so I would always feel good about starting a project in Ruby on Rails. Uh, next for your backend options is you can use a JavaScript framework. Uh, so Express on top of Node.js is a really popular uh, backend that is written in JavaScript. And people like to use JavaScript in the backend because you need to learn it for the front end anyways. So since you already need to know JavaScript, why not use those skills on the back end of your server as well? JavaScript technologies are really popular these days. I know the JavaScript meetups in my area are the most popular programming meetups. And if you look at the numbers on Stack Overflow, a lot of developers are using JavaScript these days. Uh, the biggest downside to me is the JavaScript ecosystem. It's a bit of a, a monstrous mess right now. There's just so many different modules and packages and things to set up and install. And your projects can get very large very quickly with a bunch of extra code that you're not even using. I think a lot of people get into JavaScript who don't have the strongest programming fundamentals. And that's created a bit of a mess in the ecosystem. And it can be difficult to know where to get started and what is the best package to use to solve a particular problem. So today, I think that JavaScript opportunities are expanding. I think it's a good backend technology to get into right now. Uh, next, I want to talk about Python, which is the language I prefer to use for backend. I think that Python is just a really beautiful, easy language to work with. I feel it allows me to work quickly and write elegant code. And Python has two strong frameworks for web development. There's Django, which is a more full-featured uh, framework for web development, sort of in the same vein as Ruby on Rails. Um, you'll have an MVC type of setup with templates. There's also another framework called Flask, which is a much more stripped down web framework, uh, which allows you to create really small, really fast uh, web applications. So today, I feel like Python is a great choice for your backend, especially if you know and enjoy writing Python. Uh, there's really no reason not to use it. Uh, next, I want to talk about C Sharp, which is Microsoft's backend technology. Uh, this is popular because a lot of businesses are already in the Microsoft ecosystem. And this allows them to build not only web apps, but desktop applications using the same language. With C Sharp backends, uh, you have two options for frameworks. You can use the older .NET MVC uh, framework, which will look a lot like Ruby on Rails or Django. There's also the newer .NET Core framework, which is more modern. And it also gives you the option of running your code on Linux servers as well as Windows servers. The downsides of C Sharp is that it's not open source and there isn't a great open source community around it. So if you ever need help, if you ever get stuck and have problems writing your C Sharp code, you usually need to turn to enterprise type support and help options. So today, if you're looking for a more corporate type job and you want those type of skills, then I would encourage you to choose C Sharp development for your backend. Uh, the final backend option I want to talk about is Java. So Java has been popular for decades as it brought us into the object-oriented world. And there's a lot of good de developers out there who still prefer to use Java. And Java, like C-sharp, is also pretty popular uh, in the corporate business community. Uh, the main downside to Java, to me, is that it does feel a bit dated. It feels a little bit like a, a dinosaur when you're using it. I also find it just more verbose than a lot of other programming languages. But a lot of people do enjoy Java. And if you are going to use it, I would look into a framework called Spring. I think it's probably the best Java web development framework out there. Uh, so similar to C-sharp, I think today, if you know Java web development, uh, your options for employment are pretty good. And I think that's the main reason that you would choose uh, learning Java. So the backend was all about writing code that generates HTML on your server side. Uh, but we can also run code in the user's browser. And any code we write that runs in the user's browser is part of our front end development. And the big restriction we have when we're doing front-end development is that most browsers will only run JavaScript. So we have to learn JavaScript in order to do front-end web development. As far as your options go, the first option to know about is that you can just use HTML and basic vanilla JavaScript to do your front-end. In many types of web applications, it's perfectly fine to offload most of your processing to your back-end server side and just have really minimal things going on front-side uh, in your user's browser. Beyond just basic HTML and JavaScript, you can also use jQuery. jQuery is a really useful, great library uh, that makes a lot of annoying things about JavaScript a lot easier. 
It makes it a lot easier to select and work with different elements in your HTML. It also makes things like loops and event handlers just easier and nicer to work with. So I think jQuery can be a great place to start if you're just getting started with front-end development. Uh, the downside with jQuery is it's not really meant for a front-end heavy style of web development. Uh, it'll eventually get disorganized and bloated and the performance will start to drop. So if you prefer an architecture where you have a really slim backend server just feeding you data and you want to offload most of the display type information to your front end, uh, these frameworks will help you do that. Angular is the first front end framework that I want to talk about. Angular has gone through a lot of changes in recent years, uh, but it's pretty solid right now and it's pretty much the go-to framework for single page style uh, web applications. I've used Angular for a few projects and I gotta say it wasn't my favorite. I felt like anytime I was going off the rails to do a little bit, something a little bit different, it just it seemed really difficult to get Angular to let me do what I wanted to do. But if you want to get a feel for what real front-end heavy development feels like, where you're just working with JSON APIs and data from the server, Angular is the place that I would start. Next we have Vue.js. My impression of Vue.js is that it gives you a lot of the power of Angular with a lot more flexibility. I feel like you can use Vue.js for just certain parts of your website, you don't need to build your whole website around Vue.js if that's not what you want. So I think Vue is still pretty new, but it's growing rapidly. And for my next project where I need something heavy duty on the front end, uh, I think I'm gonna try out Vue. Uh, finally, I wanna talk about React. And React is uh, something that I don't have a lot of experience with. The big promise with React is that you can use the same language and framework for both your front end and your back end, and also mobile app development if that's what you wanna do. So as you can imagine, React has become pretty popular because why not just learn one thing and be able to do front-end, back-end, and mobile. As for downsides with React, I feel like it suffers sort of the same problem that Express and Node.js has on the back-end. React has just become so popular with so many amateur programmers that it's really just a very large, bloated, and confusing ecosystem. But if you're loving JavaScript and you want to do everything in JavaScript, then React is the way you should go. I want to finish up by showing you this survey on Stack Overflow. Uh, it's from 2019 and it shows you the uh, most popular languages uh, with developers today. So if we look over the programming languages, we see that JavaScript, HTML, and CSS, these are things that pretty much every programmer knows. Uh, SQL is a database technology. And then after that, Python and Java, C Sharp, PHP, also pretty widely used. In the web frameworks, we can see that jQuery is the most popular. And this makes sense because Everybody needs to do something with JavaScript once in a while, and jQuery just makes it so much nicer to work with JavaScript. This is followed by Angular and then React, which are pretty even. So you can see that JavaScript technologies are definitely leading the pack these days. After that, we've got the corporate technologies in Microsoft's ASP.NET and Spring, which is the Java web framework. And then a level below that, we have the Python frameworks and then the PHP and Ruby on Rails frameworks. I'll wrap up by giving you my recommendations. Uh, if I was just learning how to program right now, where would I start with learning web development? So I definitely start with just basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You're gonna need to know those three technologies no matter what other full stack options you choose. And then after I learned that, I would learn a backend technology next. I would choose either Ruby on Rails or Python with Django. I think both these technologies have good documentation, uh, good communities behind them. And I think that they can teach you a lot about how server-side development works. And then after I was feeling comfortable on the back end, for front-end technology, I'd probably pick up Vue.js or maybe just jQuery, uh, depending on what my goals were. If I liked having a back-end heavy processing system, I would just stick with jQuery to do light things on the front end. But if I was curious about learning a more heavy-duty front-end experience, I think Vue.js uh, would probably be a good introduction to that. But overall, you can't go wrong with any of these options. And once you learn one of them, picking up the others will be a lot easier. So that's all I got for this week. If you have any questions that you want me to answer, uh, ask them below and I'll see if I can get to them.